Uh, but what it really means is if you notice the reason the shelves are empty is because the Fed or Yellen has been paying people to stay at home. So the truck drivers aren't driving. <laughs> They're not unloading the trucks. The shelves are empty. And everybody goes, oh my God, there's a shortage. I think it's all manufacturing. Why would they pay people not to work? Why would there be 9 million boats and ships sitting offshore? Nobody's unloading them. The shelves are empty. And everybody thinks there's inflation. There's supply and demand. Low interest rates are not good. It means the economy is collapsing. And if interest were really high, that would be good for another reason. Everything is opposite of what we think it is. You know, inflation is a tax. That's what it is. And I, and the trouble is, there really isn't inflation, it's really deflation. And the trouble is, what's deflating is the shadow banking system. And the Fed doesn't have the power to stop it. I make money, let's say I make a million dollars, I'm in trouble. Because if I don't place that money with debt and, and, and step it up to an asset, so I, I make a million dollars, I got to call Kenny. I said, I need $4 million in debt. It's completely opposite what people think. I want the debt, so Kenny's going to take the $4 million, marry it, marry it to my $1 million, and the asset becomes $5 million. And when you have a $5 million asset, then you can depreciate it, appreciate it, and amortize it. Those are counting terms. That's why I pay no taxes. Kenny and I are partners, not because I'm in real estate, but because Kenny can borrow money and he can manage the property. America was founded in 1773 as a tax-free nation. It was the Boston Tea Party. And now the New York Times wants, wants us to believe the 1619 Project or whatever it is. But it, America is really a tax-free nation. That's how it was formed. And um, it's just gone downhill since then. So let's say Kenny and I buy a property for a million dollars and he fixes it up, he increases the rent, and the property is now five million dollars. And most people would sell the property to get the four million out. And what happens if we sell the property to get the four million out again? But anyway, so let's say my property at a million, Kenny improves the property is now worth five million. How do you get the four million out again? So that's why it has been one big disaster after disaster after disaster. And I don't think we've seen the worst yet. And the thing that is shocking is that is the Fed has no power. The Fed's a joke. And that's why Ron Paul, you know, Congressman Ron Paul was with us in Texas. And he says the same thing, and the Fed. But everybody thinks the Federal Reserve Bank is omnipotent, you know, the most powerful bankers in the world. And what these guys are saying, they have no power because the real banking system is the shadow banking system. It's the banking system we cannot see. And so everybody, so when the Fed says, oh, we're going to, we're going to talk about expectations, they say, we're printing money. So the Fed says, we're, we're printing quantitative easing. And everybody goes, oh, that means it's going to be inflation. But what Lacey Hunt, Jeff Rickards, and Jeff Snatter are saying, no, it's deflation. And when Lacey Hunt started the whole thing, he was, I think he was part of the Fed. He says, what the Fed dep depends upon is GDP, gross domestic pro product, equals M2 times B. And M2 is money supply. So every time the Fed chairman, this guy Powell gets up there and says, oh, we're issuing, you know, we're going to print money, they don't print money. But everybody thinks when the Fed says we're printing money or quantitative easing, they think it's M2. And with Jeff Snyder and everybody else is saying, George, everybody's saying, the Fed doesn't print money. The Fed prints bank reserves. And the difference is we cannot spend bank reserves. It's not money. But everybody says, oh, my God, there's going to be inflation because the Fed's printing money. But they're not printing money. They're printing bank reserves. I think the most important thing is that the Fed is a joke. And everybody says, oh, don't fight the Fed. What else do they say? Fed has hard guidance. And the Fed is the Wizard of Oz. 
It's got no power. So when the Fed gets up there and says, we're going to do QE, the uneducated, the unwashed, the filthy, the people who don't watch YouTube say, oh, that means there's going to be inflation. QE, quantity is misprinting printing money. But they're not printing money, they're printing bank reserves, and you cannot spend a bank reserve. All it is is a ledger entry between, like, you know, I owe you $10, and you say, I owe you $10. But look, there's no money there. So it's a complete sham. But everybody's buying houses because they think prices are going up. Because it's called the, the Fed manages ex expectancy, not reality. So they, they send out, you know, when I watch CNBC, all those goofballs out there say, oh, the Fed issued horrid guidance. It's a, it's, it's a sham. They want to trick you. And that's what guys like Lacey Hunt, Jeff Snatter, and Jim Records are saying. It's bullshit. But let me explain it, because this is what Jeff Snatter made really clear. It goes to the monetary system, the banking system. There's a thing called the shadow banking. And the shadow banking system is like a hundred times bigger than the Fed. And what all three guys, Lacey Hahn, Jim Records, and Jeff Snyder are saying, the shadow banking system is crashing. So the Fed is out there saying, oh, we're issuing forward guidance saying, uh, we're going to print QE or whatever they do. So everybody thinks price is going up. But the reality of the three guys are saying, we're, we're going into a depression. It's crashing. Because the biggest money system is a shadow banking system. We cannot see it. It's crashing as we speak. Uh, I just want to say to people, to borrow 300 million, you've got to be absolutely spot on with the management. And as you know, management is a key for real estate, for businesses, for the government, everything. And if a person cannot manage, we're screwed. So as long as we have our management skills in, we'll do well. Like, I don't, I don't really care. You know, as, as I said in front of the room, I said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, because I have a Learjet and my money is stashed offshore. It's such a good time to be alive. Really, as bad as it is, it's the most exciting time I've ever seen. I, I've been investing a wild man in startups. There's so much, there's so much stuff coming down the pipe. So there's more opportunity as technology changes. So there's a lot of good stuff happening. So let me give you the good news, no matter how bad the news is. Like I said, when we stood up in Texas, I said, how much money did you borrow last week? And Kenneth said $300 million. That's always there. The banks have to lend money. So when people say, well, you should save cash, why would you save cash when you can borrow it? So, you know, it's almost like the real you know, real estate owned. In those days, they, in the in 2008 and all that, all that property was available, but the bank owned it. REO is what called, real estate owned. You could go to the bank and they said, look, you got this office building, nobody wants it, sell it to me. And the bank would actually loan you the money to buy the property. The secret to life is how much money can you borrow and how well can you manage that debt. I remember so many of these disasters and finally I realized disasters were the best time to get rich. So it's, it's a very exciting time because this is the best time, but you better know who you know. I don't care if a doctor is the best doctor in the world. Like I said, he's the guy who's going to make a million dollars next year. And he's going to give 600000 of it to the government. And we can borrow a million dollars, and it's all tax-free. Because the key to it is debt and taxes. If you can manage debt, and you, know, you don't pay taxes, you're way, ahead, you're way down the road. So because as long as you can borrow money, the banks are happy to give it. But you've got to have the collateral. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. 
Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you are 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are 7 key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.